Democratic State Senator Carlos Uresti and co-defendant Gary Kane are guilty of 20 combined felony charges in an end to their four-week-long criminal fraud trial that has stunned both San Antonio and the state capitol. In a week-long operation, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement officers arrested nearly 150 people in what they're calling an enforcement operation in South and Central Texas, including 41 people in San Antonio. A San Antonio police captain fired last year for insubordination and working an off-duty job is defending his choice to disobey a supervisor, calling the order unlawful. And while budgetary problems have been an ongoing issue for South San ISD, the problem seems to be getting worse. Good morning. Those are your headlines from ExpressNews.com. I'm Chance Dorland with your Express News Briefing for Friday, February 23rd. Brought to you this morning by North Park Mazda, the number one Mazda dealer in Texas last month. A jury has found Democratic State Senator Carlos Uresti and co-defendant Gary Kane guilty of 20 combined felony charges. And just hours later, amid calls for Uresti's resignation, Thursday, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick took steps to remove the Democrat from his Senate committee assignments. Uresti and Kane are guilty of defrauding investors in the now-defunct company Four Winds Logistics that bought and sold sand used in fracking for oil production before it collapsed in 2015, and now face the possibility of years in federal prison and up to millions of dollars in fines when they're sentenced on June 25th by senior U.S. District Judge David Ezra. Here's U.S. Attorney for the Western District of Texas, John Bash. The jury just convicted uh, Senator Carlos Uresti uh, on all counts, including wire fraud, securities fraud, associated conspiracy counts, money laundering counts, and also failure to register as a broker with the SEC. The jury also convicted his co-conspirator, Gary Kane, of money laundering and, co- and associated conspiracy counts. Uh, this investigation has yielded four other convictions uh, via guilty pleas, including the conviction of CEO, Four Winds Logistics CEO Stan Bates, uh, on the eve of trial. Four Winds Logistics was essentially set up as a fraudulent scheme to lure investors to put money with the co conspirators via false pretenses, false promises, misrepresentations, including altered financial documents. Um, that money was supposed to go to buying fracking sand for oil production, but in actuality, a lot of that money went to pay prior investors. Uh, a lot of that money went to personal expenses by the co-conspirators, everything from gifts and travel and luxury vehicles to controlled substances, even prostitutes. Amid a throng of media outside the courthouse, Uresti said he was disappointed with the verdict and apologized to his wife while resolving to keep his Senate seat and appeal the decision. Well, obviously, uh, very, very disappointed uh, with, with the verdict. But, um, I respect our judicial system as a lawyer, 25 years. You know, I can't uh, find the right words, obviously, but I do want to thank my, my wife, Deanna, and apologize for everything that I put her through, my family uh, as well. Earlier this month, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement officers arrested 145 people during what the agency calls a week-long enforcement operation that ended February 16th. A news release details the arrests that also include 41 people taken into custody by ICE in San Antonio, notably a 42-year-old man from Mexico who is in the country illegally and with convictions of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and driving while intoxicated. Most of those arrested will be deported, but some will face criminal charges. While the raids were part of targeted enforcement operations that ICE regularly carries out, under President Donald Trump, immigration officials have been criticized for arresting not just the targets of their raids, who usually have outstanding deportation orders or criminal convictions, but also immigrants they encounter who haven't committed crimes other than being in the United States illegally. Of the 145 arrested, ICE says 86 have criminal convictions. A police captain fired last year for insubordination and working an off-duty job at USAA without permission says he chose to disobey a direct order from his superior because he felt it was unlawful. While Captain Sean Yuri, a 23-year SAPD veteran, is not contesting he disobeyed orders or worked without a permit, 
Thursday, he told an independent arbitrator that given the circumstances, his actions were justified. The city fired him in March after Yuri had accumulated 10 months of paid leave that he wanted to take while working as a financial research analyst at USAA. The hearing highlights the controversial policy in the police bargaining contract that allows officers to take off months or even years of work at a time with pay using accumulated vacation, holiday, and other leave. Police Chief William McManus has tried to restrict the practice but dropped the issue after being opposed by the police union. At stake in the arbitration is whether Yuri gets his job back, possibly with retroactive pay, his pension, and roughly $100,000 from vacation, holiday, and other paid leave. City lawyers say if the former captain was upset his off-duty work permit was denied, he should have filed a grievance with help from the police union or appealed the order through his chain of command instead of disobeying. But Yuri claims he filed two grievances with help from the union, even if he did not precisely follow the contract and general manual procedures that dictate how a superior should be notified of a grievance and how long an officer has to appeal. In addition to these stories, today our reporters are also chasing down more headlines, including the budgetary woes that have been an ongoing issue for South San ISD, and that the money problems appear to be getting worse. As even after closing two campuses and its alternative school last year, the district continues to bleed students and the corresponding funding it receives to teach them. In addition, South San must now also cut $7.4 million from next year's budget. And new support for Dreamers, left in limbo by a hostile White House and fractious Congress, is on its way from the Catholic Church. With a strong statement on behalf of young undocumented immigrants this week, the U.S. Conference of Bishops, led by Texas Cardinal Daniel DiNardo, have announced that a National Catholic Call-In Day to protect Dreamers will take place on Monday, followed a day later by bishops' visits to Capitol Hill. And that's your Express Briefing for Friday, February 23rd from ExpressNews.com. Brought to you this morning by North Park Mazda, the number one Mazda dealer in Texas last month. I'm Chance Dorland.